Hello, Joe. How's it going? Hey, everyone. Welcome to our very special Cad Bane reveal stream. We are super excited about this. How are you doing, Sean? Uh, I'm doing fantastic. And uh, just to let you know, it looks like we got 48 uh, people hanging out with us currently. So I think we have uh, quite a bit of interest in some Cad Bane. Otherwise, they're here just for you and me, which is also kind of cool, too. So <laughs> I think they just Welcome, came for everyone. the... For the sh for yeah. the shades, I didn't even bring my shades out today, so Joe's rocking <laughs> rocking solo. It's sunnier where he is. You can see I'm kind of in this dark uh, dark interior here. So, yeah, um, yeah, no, that's uh, super exciting. I'm uh, I'm really excited about uh, today's show for sure. Uh, I think I think people are as well. We got a, a lot to reveal um, here for CAD. Uh, in fact, it's going to be full up spoils. So if you're waiting for, you know, the assembly guide, which I, I'm pretty sure is the most exciting part of CAD Bane, um, we have that, but we have a few other things too. So if you're looking for command cards and such, so we got people coming in from, uh, Australia here, 5 AM. So they're really getting, uh, up early nice. to see Welcome. this. Uh, Daniel's letting you know that you got some really cool shades. Uh, Michael Hammond coming in and uh, definitely here uh, for CAD. So very clearly, Michael uh, downgraded to acquaintance of the show um, <laughs> just for that one. So uh, fantastic. Um, before we get into the uh, to the CAD promo, um, do you want to give people the other extra special news that, uh, you know, the, the people that are hanging out and uh, maybe uh, interested in a small little giveaway? we might be doing on today's uh, show well uh, i guess up till uh live cast on tuesday all right yeah so um we're trying to get people to check out our youtube channel um we're going to be uploading this video after we're finished with the stream we're going to be uploading it on youtube um we want to get people to subscribe to our youtube channel because we'd like to eventually potentially migrate our stream over to youtube so we've got a special giveaway um all you need to do is subscribe to our YouTube YouTube channel. We will randomly select a winner based on the subscribers, whether you've been subscribed this whole time or you're new. We're just going to pick from the whole list and we're going to send you four silhouettes. So one for each faction um, of our Legion Academy silhouettes. And if you guys haven't seen those yet, uh, you could head on over to legionacademy.net and they're available for purchase. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be giving a set of four away one of each faction to YouTube channel subscribers. So just go take a look at the uh, Legion Academy YouTube page and click the subscribe button. But um, uh, yeah, that's it. I really want to just get into that. What do you yeah. think, Sean? Yep, for sure. Sorry, kind of a little bit of a cut out there. So um, let's just slide over here just in case people are not aware uh, what exactly we are doing. So obviously this is a Cad Bane special uh, show. You're here for that. But if you're just popping in and you didn't know that, well, surprise. Um, here it is. We're going to do a full spoil on Cad. We're not sure when Cad's going to come out, but uh, this will be a nice um, kind of an end anticipatory uh, segment here. And so when and if uh, CAD comes to your local gaming store, um, I'm sure he will eventually, uh, you will be all excited and we are super excited. Uh, there's a lot to uh, to showcase here. So um, let's just slide over here. We're gonna cover off kind of the, the more housekeeping things in case you haven't seen. Obviously we like the the mechanics and the cards and the, and the things, but I think first and foremost, I think I speak for a lot of people that were really drawn uh, to the models. Uh, I'm not sure about you, Joe, but um, I'm really uh, I'm really digging the uh, Electro Gauntlet uh, hat version here as opposed to the double gun. But I mean, is there a bad Cad Bane? Not really sure. No, I, I actually I really love all the different options, and we'll see his build guide here in a minute. But man, I love him with the hat, and I really like him. You know, like speaking into those wrist gauntlets, like the comms. Uh, maybe maybe he's communicating like I'm about to set off a bomb or get me out of here or something. Um, I really like him with the hat, but I also love that he the the option to build him without the hat is there because I think that actually is going to make for some really cool conversions. I've already heard people talking about um, you know putting his head onto a clone trooper body for that time that episode of the Clone Wars where he was you know in that Dinal disguise. Yeah. So. There's there's a lot of cool things you can do with this with this model and a lot of cool pose options and 
I'm really excited about it. Yeah, I mean, the double gun pose uh, definitely has that Wild West feel. I mean, this entire sculpt kind of has that Wild West feel for sure. Um, I do like the... <laughs> I ordered... Okay, fair enough. Uh, Robert coming in. Well, thank you, Robert. Robert coming in saying he had ordered 16 uh, of our silhouettes. So, uh, and by the way, awesome. he said he can't wait to get them. I did see yesterday a whole host of people were um, posting up some Legion Academy silhouettes. So we do know that they have arrived and are arriving. So if you ordered in that first wave, they're out. Second wave is not uh, finished production, but um, we'll be doing those in intervals. So if you are ordering, but thanks a lot, Robert, for that. So yeah, just back thank to the you. model there for a second. Um, the sil on the topic of silhouettes, we really have a nice opportunity here to, as you said, play around with the with the modeling. So um, the guns sticking out from the sides or the front, uh, the wispy cape, uh, all that cool stuff. We're we're going to see some probably unique and dynamic poses with CAD, and I'm really glad that people aren't going to be restricted um, from the standpoint of a silhouette. So, yeah. Um, right. let's, let's pop up the, uh, this, uh, you may or may not have seen, but let's just pop that up in case you're curious. Um, that's the assembly guide there. Um, so they have them with the dual LL30 blaster pistol, and then he has the activating gauntlet control panel. So, um, again, within that, you're going to have some variety in terms of going hat and no hat. You can see here that the head is one piece. Thank you. And the hat mm -hmm. is a separate piece. Um, the looks like the respirator is also going to be one of those finicky small pieces. So it might be might be a challenge to get those to line up. But uh, other than that, it looks like it's a pretty straightforward build, I'd say. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I again, going back to what I was saying about that conversion, if you look at that head with the little peg at the bottom, I mean, that's pretty much exactly the same way that the uh, the clone heads are shaped. Yep. So it should it should just like I I'm guessing it should just sock it right in if you wanted to do that conversion, which makes it nice and easy. And yep. I believe in that episode he wasn't wearing the the respirator. Right. So that's that's all the more reason why I think it's it's actually a good thing that those pieces are separate. Um, even though yeah, that is probably going to be a pretty small piece, but I I don't mind it. I think it's it's a necessary thing there. So. Looks like he's pretty easy to assemble, though. I like it, how his uh, his legs and torso are just one large piece. Yeah, you know and I'm... yeah, and it, it doesn't look like it would be too difficult if you wanted to do a slight um, leg pose uh, adjustment. Looks like you have a bunch of of, uh, for lack of a better word, a bunch of meat there to work with. So if you wanted mm -hmm. to do some soft manipulation, you could certainly uh, certainly do that there. So like if you wanted to toe up that front leg or even adjust that that back leg a little bit. So I like that the cape is not attached to the back leg. So if you wanted to do a slight manipulation mm -hmm. of that cape, turn it up a bit more or something like that, there is there is lots of modeling possibilities there too. So, mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. So just also wanted to say, just big shout out, uh, thanks to the 64 people that are hanging out with us. So big crowds. Oh, wow. uh, yeah. So it turns out all you have to do is have some special reveals to uh, to get a crowd out. So <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Um, okay. So uh, have we teased enough, Joe? Are we ready to, to get in and maybe uh, at least break down the, the card and start getting into some of the commands? Yeah, I th I'd say let's do it. All right, let's do it. Okay, so again, not something that you haven't seen, but we got to set a platform, a foundation for for the character that we're we're talking about here. So, um, and man, I I hope that uh, somebody models a holocron somehow for uh, for CAD. So, mm, just, yeah, that'd uh, be awesome. Get those resin printers out. Potential missed opportunity to not include like a like a holocron bit in the uh, in the CAD Bane sprue, eh? Just, you know, yeah. a, little, a little piece of debris, kind of like you could, or, you know, just a piece that you could add, uh, you know, to put on your base. But I'm sure somebody will uh, will um, will figure that out. So, um, Darren, yeah, thanks. Uh, again, we're hitting a good time slot here because we're getting the, the UK crowd here. Darren coming in uh, saying it's only 8 p.m. So, um, nice. all right. So let's just break down CAD. I'll walk, I'll walk us through this. And then, Joe, you can talk about the specifics here. So CAD coming in at 125. Um, he is in the operative slot. He is mm -hmm. six health, which is really uh, meaty, I think. I mean, he, he makes up for that. I guess that, that health needs to cover off that white defense dice. But uh, three courage. He uh, surges both up and down to hit and block. 
Um, mm-hmm. His melee, not bad. Three black dice coming into this. This is martial arts skills. And then his dual LL30 mm-hmm. blaster pistols coming in. Uh, range one to two, four black, pierce one, always uh, awesome. Uh, yep. j- jump one keyword, definitely um, going to be big for him. Uh, bounty, so that's a nice mechanic. We all love that, and the fact that CIS is going to get that in there is great. Danger Sense 2. Um, so just remember that you can choose not to remove suppression tokens. That might come into play in a card we're going to talk a little bit about uh, while defending. And you can roll one extra dice for each suppression token that you have. So white defense dice with surge plus danger sense, six health, maybe makes him seemingly a bit more meaty than uh, than white defense dice would lead us to believe. Uh, sharpshooter one with pierce, that's awesome and steady. So after performing a move action, get a free ranged attack action. So so also pretty awesome uh, there. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot going on just on his base card. Um, Danger Sense, definitely not something to be oh. underestimated. We've seen oh. it in Jin. You know, you roll white saves, and, and in, in combination with that Courage 3, uh, you really could, you're really could. you really safe to hold on to one or two suppressions, not lose any actions, and then just add you know, two extra dice to your defensive rolls, which really kind of makes him a little bit more defensive than he might f- at first appear on paper. Huh. Um, I think it's also worth noting his uh, upgrade slots. He's got a training slot, a comm slot, a gear slot, an armament slot, and a grenade. So I want to talk about, first of all, I want to talk about that armament slot because there's a pretty awesome upgrade that I, I have a feeling most people are just going to staple on him, and that's his Electro Gauntlets. Um, we, you know, you can see on his base card that he has he normally has three blacks in melee with, like, no other effects, but those Electro Gauntlets allow him to roll four reds in melee, and it has Immobilize and Suppressive. And it's Immobilize three, meaning... No matter what, your opponent is completely rooted in place if you attack them with that weapon. Um, And it only comes in at 10 points. So I have a feeling that um, it's pretty mandatory to to equip that on him. Also, the Electro Gauntlets have an effect that say when you, um, you can perform moves while engaged with a unit that has... Uh, three or more immobilized tokens even while this card is exhausted so you get into melee you punch someone you give them three immobilized tokens and then you're free to move out of that melee it's kind of like boba fett's uh whip cord but now it's just an exhaustible 10 point upgrade that you can put on cad bane at all times and i mean you combine that with steady so he can like move into melee do an attack and then immobilize mobilize someone and move out of melee, combine that with jump, and then all of a sudden he's starting to look really mobile, really powerful. You could set up a lot of big plays. You could set up some bounty stuff. There's a lot of interesting things you can do just on his base card before we even get into his command cards. Um, and I think looking at some of the upgrades, I mean, there's it's there's a lot of strong upgrades I think you can end up putting on Cad Bane. Hunter comes to mind. Uh, offensive push comes to mind. Uh, any sort of grenade would seem interesting. Maybe droid poppers is even something to consider. Um, just to, you know, d- do some extra damage or potentially immobilize or put ion tokens on some droids. There's a lot of cool stuff. Um, I, I think there's even an argument to be made for possibly putting comms jammer on him and playing him as a melee character or HQ uplink, something like that. So a lot of cool stuff in his base card. Do you have anything you want to add to that, Sean? Or do you have any, are there any questions coming in from the chat about his base card or anything before we get into the command cards? Uh, just a question about snow troopers. If they were the only other unit with steady, uh, I, I think, so I'm just. Uh, is anything I can't else? remember if I can't remember if Dubacks have relentless or steady. I think they have relentless. So that might be true. Snowtroopers right. might be the only thing with steady. 
Yeah, Ben uh, indicating here endurance or ducking cover uh, for danger sense might be also oh. nice nice additions. Um, yes, I real like I think you can kind of go with either. I mean, you. Cad's kind of in that little bit of a mid ground, I think, where he has the potential to be um, increasingly offensive or the ability to kind of tank him up and go fairly defensive. So I think maybe when we get into the command cards, you can maybe start figuring out maybe what your Cad's going to look like. Yeah. Um, in some future episodes, we're probably not going to do it in this one because we'll probably keep this one around an hour. We don't want to make it overly long, but we'll we'll start adding Cad into some lists and start talking about kind of the roles that we we might position our cads and and what they can, what he can actually do to a lists but i think there's yeah. going to be i think i mean given the upgrades that he has all the keywords you know effectively going to be a swiss army knife for sure um it's just going to be how you're going to flavor him up to uh, to complement your other units i think for sure yeah and i really just want to emphasize just to keep this in mind as we look at the command cards like keep in mind that he has steady keep in mind that he has danger sense keep in mind that he has jump and bounty there's a lot of a lot more synergies you're going to get out of his command cards once you see them here in a minute that make these base keywords even more interesting on him, I think. Yeah. Um, I don't know about you, Joe, but I, 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 I'm, Barely can hold back chat here. I think yeah, I think we I think we need to we gotta to drop in. So just just to preface it, what we're gonna do, we're gonna jump over here. Let's hide up some of those. You guys will see that we're gonna do all of them. There's your spoiler. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover off all the the cards, uh, one pip to three pip. We know that one of them's already been revealed. That's fine. Uh, but we'll cover that off just for full context here, um, and then walk you through. There is one card, the three pip, that we're gonna need to kind of break down into a separate screen. There's gonna be some specific rules around that, and all will be revealed. So just uh, just hang tight and stick with us. So. Um, all right. Uh, record number there at 72. Fantastic. I like the monitor awesome. of the chat number because I, I do like to know who's hanging out with us. So let's have a look. Here he is. First one. Uh, take it away, Joe. I am your worst nightmare. I already yes. knew that, Joe, but, but thanks for sharing. <laughs> thanks for sharing. Yeah, so there we go. Art on it. Awesome. One pip. Issues orders just to Cad Bane. Uh, says Cad Bane gains uncanny luck too. During Cad Bane's activation, he can perform up to two attack actions. So seems really straightforward, but let's let's just think about some of these synergies here. So as a reminder, Uncanny Luck 2, it's the same keyword that Han Solo has. It essentially means that when he rolls defensive dice, he can re-roll two of those, up to two of those defensive dice. And you combine that with his already base Danger Sense 2. And now we're starting to see, oh, you know, it might not really matter that Cad Bane has white saves with Surge because he's just getting more and more defensive. He's got the defense of the Danger Sense, Danger Sense 2, plus the ability on his one pip to re-roll two dice. And it looks like this is going to be a card that you want to save and use when you really know that you want to die. Maybe you need to aggressively dive in and go for a bounty. Maybe you want to aggressively move in and immobilize a force user like Luke or Dooku or something, root them in place and get out. He also has, don't forget that he has jump one, so he could spring this trap from, you know, like let's say he's hiding behind a line of sight blocker, jumps over the line of sight blocker. Uh, plays this card so when he you know if he's gonna not be able to get to a safe position he's ultra defensive but then here's the even more interesting part uh, he could perform up to two attack actions so there's a lot of different ways that you can do that remember one that he has steady so you can move into melee after a move and do a melee attack into a second melee attack kind of son of skywalker style you can move, shoot, move, shoot. You can move, shoot, shoot. You know, you could shoot, move, shoot. <laughs> so there's a lot of, there's a lot of, it's just extra ways to get a bounty. Right? I almost felt like you were going to break into a song there, uh, Joe. Yeah. Like it's some, it sounds like a country tune coming out of you there. So <laughs> yeah, the, the move, shoot, scoot. Yeah, fair enough. I like it. I like it. <laughs> yeah, so. A lot of, I mean, it's it's a great one pip, right? I mean, it's it's like Son of Skywalker turned up a notch, I think. Uh, I'm so, just thinking, you know, what about, you know, you got, that's where, 
you know, maybe initially you're not looking at investing those points in, in a grenade, but, uh, you know, this turn here where you could potentially come out and, and toss some, some really effective grenades. Um, and even if you only had that one turn coupled with this card, I think that there is potential that, uh, that the, they could be really, really effective. And yeah, you're going to be a little bit in, a, in terms of a close range, but, um, that, I'm that jump helps close that distance. I'm wondering if the only grenade worth putting on him, if you're going to put a grenade on him, is the droid popper, just to give him access to an ion. Because it's isn't it just a single model throwing one grenade, so it's like one die. Like I don't, yeah. I, so I don't know. That's that's one of those things I think that's super corner case. But but here's the thing, there definitely are armor skews that are going to be forming in the new meta. I've already been right. talking to a lot of guys. Um, there's some people are going to be running a lot of armor. So the ability to have access to potentially an ion token generating unit in this faction is, is something to consider, but yeah, I'm more interested in like move electro gauntlets, move, shoot, or like move, shoot, move electro gauntlets or something. See if you can, you know, get a kill secure a bounty you, you and, and that's the other thing too like what if you bounty r2d2 he's pretty soft pretty easy to kill uh immobilizing him just kind of cripples his whole plan you know there's a lot of there's a lot of things but i want to remind the chat keep in mind this setup especially when we start to talk about the three pip here in a minute yeah, but uh, Sam was just pointing out here uh, and kind of, uh, again, speaking to what I was talking about, offensive, defense. So you've suggested a lot of offensive moves there. Uh, but the smoke grenade uh, yeah. would potentially be, uh, again, some, depending on what, you're, what role you're putting him in, if CAD comes out to be kind of a, kind of a blocker or sort of a buff to your other units, um, then that very well could be something that you, uh, that you may want to use. So. Um, For sure. And... And uh, the other question was, so he also pointed out, he wasn't sure. He said you can't move melee, melee, because he has steady, not relentless. But um, True. Yeah, so if you move. Mm -hmm. um, you have to take a ranged attack. A ranged attack, yeah. So the melee is mm -hmm. not, not there. So you'd have to range and then. Yeah, uh, yeah. but that's, if you're, that's true. But if you're already engaged in melee, exactly. let's say at the start of the turn, you could punch yep. twice. Yes, exactly. Uh, so. Keep in mind, though, in that case that electro gauntlets does exhaust so you can't double electro gauntlet someone if you wanted to stay in melee with them you could punch them with your fist weapon the three blacks and then the electro gauntlets or vice versa or you could start engaged punch someone move out shoot someone else or shoot that same target to finish them off so yeah that's true a lot of things to keep in mind there it is good to distinguish the difference between steady and relentless steady only works on ranged attacks so that is true all right um anything else on the one pip cad has a little bit of a bailout mechanism um with his uncanny luck coupled with um coupled with danger sense and i was saying that with a six uh six health unit um with white defense dice although that may uh potentially feel a little bit vulnerable i think he has a little bit of a bailout potential um if you wanted to put him in a, in a more risky position so yeah i for just, sure yeah i just muted myself there i repeated myself we're good um two pip ready to go yeah let's let's do it okay there so it is. This, this shouldn't be a surprise to anyone who's been no. keeping up with the news because I believe that this has already been shown, but we'll just get into it. I'm in control. Um, okay, so at the start of Cad Bane's activation, he may transfer... Oh, it's a, I'm sorry. At the start or end... And it's, end it's start and end, yet. Yeah, of Cad Bane's activation, he may transfer any number of his suppression tokens to any number of uh, trooper units at range one to two. Each enemy trooper unit gains at least one suppression token in there. What is that? I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time. No, no worries. Yeah. Uh, so each enemy trooper unit that gains at least one suppression token in this way also gains one immobilized token. Okay, so there you go. So. Not only is it putting, it, are you able to like dish off all of your suppression tokens, but you're also slowing down enemy movement. For um, sure. And I, 
And I think this is going to be really strong when you combine it with his three pip, which we'll see in a minute here. But let's just talk about a couple of things here. So Cad Bane in one unit, pretty standard two pip. Um, you know, you can you can do Cad Bane and then you can issue an order to like a B1 and send it down your chain. Or you can uplink a B1 and issue an order to Grievous or Dooku or a vehicle, something else. So usually two pips give you some nice control in the CIS and this is definitely uh, going to allow you to still have that control. Hence I'm in control. Um, <laughs> again, I like again, I know, I know Joe, you, do, you don't have to keep making the point here. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's a couple of things I like. I like that this is both for the start and end of Cad Bane's activation because sure. When you start your activation, that's when you're going to determine your actions, right? So let's say you have like four suppression on you. You can dish them all off, not lose any actions, and now you're potentially immobilizing and suppressing up to four different units, especially if you dive into someone's army or play that one pip and like save it to go last or something, then play this as a first. You can do this nice immobilize suppression dump play, and it's got a lot of really interesting implications. But the other thing that's cool about allowing you to do this at the end of Cad Bane's activation is there are still ways during the middle of your activation that you can gain suppression. Um, let's say you want to walk into a standby or w like someone's got Overwatch or something and you want to walk in, they're going to shoot you, you're going to gain suppression during your activation, but it's still your activation. You can dish that suppression off. Um, let's say you're playing against an opponent who has sab mines and they choose to detonate some sab mines during your activation. That's going to add suppression to you. You can still dish those off. Um, I think that there's going to be a lot of really interesting setup plays. I think this is kind of a tricky card. Um, when you it, it seems simple on paper, but getting the setup and making the play with this is going to be maybe take some finesse, some practice. But there's I think there's a lot of synergy. If you can immobilize something and then have like BX commando droids charge in for their melee attack, or you can immobilize something out in the open, slow it down. Again, like I said before, maybe a force user. Now you can bombard it with the rest of your army. There's a lot of potential here. I I think there's also something to be said. Uh, I not to uh, not to think that that suppression is not effective, but that immobilize token for me is is really important here. I'm just trying to think about a situation where maybe maybe you um, it, Cad's holding on to a few. Again, remembering he has three courage. And so he's mm -hmm. still going to get that one action for quite some time. You know, he's he's not going to lose a lot of actions there. But he, I mean, maybe he has four four suppression, and he still gets that action. He doesn't necessarily have to dish off those um, suppression at the start. He can charge in, as Joe said, and maybe he's moving in on a center point where now he's going to be right at the at that extent of range two. Dish out some suppression. Okay, again, it's any number of suppression token to any number of trooper units. If you immobilize mm -hmm. some some units and, and cut their and cut their movement down, maybe they have to dive to a center point either to touch it or to get within range one. If they're at range yep. two and they only got a speed two, they're going to be short of that. And if they got to touch it, they're definitely going to be short of that. So CAD can yeah. really hold up for you know that late game push where somebody's going to try to push two three um, units on a on a center objective, key position, or otherwise. Um, mm -hmm. This this becomes a really nice uh, a stopgap. Um, yeah, you, you may be sacrificing CAD here, but if it's to prevent three or four scoring units from getting there, fantastic. True. Here's another thing. I mean, the other thing about choosing to do it at the end also after your start, let's say you have three suppression, right? You dish off one at the start of your activation. So now you're under your courage threshold. You're going to get your two actions. But you're outside of range two of something that you actually want to immobilize and suppress. So now move, move, steady, you know, you're shooting or whatever. You're moving towards something that's outside of that range two bubble. You get into that range two bubble, boom, now you dish off the suppression at the end of your activation onto different units that weren't eligible at first. Uh, just thinking too, the electric gauntlet's going to give additional immobilized tokens, does it not? 
It does well. It gives yep. three. It's right. Yeah, it's so I'm just saying now you got now you got potential to offload suppression at the end with immobilize tokens. Maybe you gauntlet someone um, mm -hmm. if you're if you're thinking that uh, they got any way of getting rid of those those immobilized tokens in that turn. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, you wanna you'll strategically want to spread those out. But the ability for a unit to dish out multiple immobilized tokens uh, seems fantastic. For sure. Yeah, so there, there's a lot of cool stuff here. Um, I'm excited to see what people are going to do with this card because there's there's a lot of different plays to set up with it. And I think it's way more flexible once you start to see it on the table than it might appear just from reading the text. All right, anyone have any questions in chat or comments or anything, Sean? And if not, chat, maybe we yeah. can just jump into the three. Chat's coming in here. Uh, token control is pretty strong. Mm -hmm. Um, there was, uh, Justin saying hurts, uh, tauntauns, um, okay. for, for a turn. Um, mm -hmm. then, uh, Sam was making my point uh, that it combos with electric gauntlet. Yes. Um, is if electric gauntlet's already exhausted, um, that's what he was saying there. Uh, Paul saying great card, lots of tactical options. Cad has sharpshooter one also handing out suppression is less a mm -hmm. problem for him. Uh, he can force standbys on enemies to fire at him for good defense. That's what you were kind of saying as yep. well. And then losing their standby from the card. Yep. So, yep. Um, yeah, if you're able to put t put tokens on uh, units and make them lose standbys if they didn't trigger or couldn't trigger. Um, yeah, very, uh, very good point for sure. So, yep. yeah, no, there's there's a ton. I like, I like this card. Even though we knew it, I think that in context with, you know, given that we're going to know what his other cards are, and uh, maybe having a little bit more of a, a, an analysis with his unit card coupled with this, I think um, there's definitely things there. I mean, not to mention, even if you end up dishing uh, suppression off to your for your own units for whatever reason, um, the, the nice part with droids not losing actions to suppression is uh, also uh, pretty good. Because again, Cad may want to dish off his suppression, but may not have enemy units within range one to two. But the offload can still happen on your own units. Yeah. So so that is a nice offload. It's almost like um it's almost like an esteemed leader for wounds, but in this case it's suppression to to make sure that Caddy's either has full action or has at least enough suppression dished off to for you to do what you want to do with him. So I think right. that's kinda of, that's kind of a cool mechanic as well. So there's a there's a lot to understand there. It's start and end, it's enemy or friendly trooper units and it's a mm -hmm. suppression and uh immobilized token so uh, yeah. lots of card lots of card text there so yep only the enemies gain the immobilized token though i believe so uh that's that... correct yeah yeah each yeah. enemy which too is good. which is good because you're not like yep although i I'm, and maybe and maybe army. yeah that's right only the immobilized yeah so james is asking if i can increase the size of the card there i don't have the opportunity to do that at this point in this uh layout but uh we can we can look at bringing those up a little bit full screen uh potentially on tuesday for you uh but we'll yeah, do our very sure. best to, to read everything out for you so all right uh so before we get into to pip three we gotta i just want to preface that we are going to have to talk about three and then we're going to break down three on another screen because three has a lot going on. So um, if you're if you're thinking about clicking off and clicking back in, you're probably going to lose the context. So uh, so stick with us here uh, as we break down this uh, the last and final card here. All right. So here it is. I'll read it, Joe, just so because it's easier for you to uh, see it on the next one. So here okay. it is. I make the rules now. I wanted to also say that, so j just so it was clear to Joe <laughs> that because uh, the first two were kind of kind of for him. So uh, I make the rules now. Cad Bane's three pip, and so there is two separate contexts in which this card can be used. So first, if this card was not divulged, and Joe's going to cover divulged in a minute, you're going to place one Bane token within range one of Cad Bane and beyond range one of all enemy units. That is if you don't divulge the card. Mm -hmm. The secondary is if you do divulge the card, and this is during a deploy unit step, you're going to place three Bane tokens on the battlefield beyond range one of any deployment zone, and you do not deploy Cad Bane at this time. This card must be selected during round one. So you're telegraphing your three pip as your round one play if you mm -hmm. divulge um, Cad Bane. There's also um, a weapon effect on this, mm -hmm. and it's a uh, range one here. Yep. 
Uh, area of effect. Yeah, area of effect. Two red, two black, surge crit, blast, impact two, suppressive. Yep. Okay. Okay. Let's let's get into this because there's a lot more to this. You're probably going, what the heck is a Bane token? <laughs> exactly. We'll, we'll, def- <laughs> we'll definitely jump into it. And you're probably thinking, oh, it's it looks like it's just a sab bomb, but not necessarily. So first of all, let's cover Divulge. Div- specifically divulge deploy unit step that's the same effect you see on operative vaders three pip yeah what that means for those of you who haven't played a card that has divulge on it yet it means that you have you make the choice right you're deploying your units when you're deploying your units you can choose to show this card to your opponent and you're forced to play this card on turn one so you're essentially revealing this card right away deploying units and then you can resolve the effect on the second half of the card if you don't do that and you just fully deploy your army and then you start turn one you could just play this three pip at any time like any other command card and just it just treat it as a normal three pip and if that's the case you resolve the effect on the top half of the card so Let's look at it. It's a three pip. It only issues orders to Cad Bane. This is more like a very Cad Bane specific trick. Um, if you're playing it like a normal command card and you're not divulging it, you get to put one Bane token on the table within range one of Cad Bane and beyond range one of, of all enemy units. If you're do, if you're playing it as a uh, divulge at the beginning of your deployment, that's where you don't put Cad Bane on the table when you deploy, and instead you put three Bane tokens down. Now let's let's get into the Bane tokens so that people can understand what they are, because they're actually all three of the tokens are different. Yep, you bet. All right, so let's slide over here. Got the card just for context for you folks. So here we go, breaking down the Bane tokens. So first what we're gonna do is we're going to start by showing you the three tokens. Um, I don't have a picture of the back, but just know uh, I'm going to cover off the uh, the specifics of the rules uh, here. Uh, so let me just read this off. So Bane tokens. Cad Bane has a set of three unique Bane tokens that can be placed on the battlefield by his command card, I make the rules now. Bane tokens are double-sided with a uniform back and three different images on the front. You see those images here. Um, they come in two sets, so you'll get a set if you're red player and if you are blue player. When a player places a Bane token, they place them face down, so you'll see the generic back face up. And then after a mini moves, deploys, or is placed within range one of the enemy Bane token, so kind of like a, a mine effect here, um, if that mini has line of sight, then the token becomes revealed, flipping it over to reveal one of the three faces. When a Bane token is revealed, it has the following effect according to the image that's on the front of the token. And we're going to break down each of these tokens here for you. So just to recap there, right. when they're placed out, the the, uh, the caveats for placing are on the three pip. The tokens look generically on the back. Um, they're red or blue player, depending on which what you are for CAD. So it's nice if you get a mirror match or something like that, you, uh, you can definitely discern whose tokens are whose. Then if you uh, come within range one of either deploy it within range one, move within range one, or end up in uh, range one, however that occurs, um, then if you have line of sight, you will flip the token and resolve the effect. And just keep in mind that if you're playing this as the divulge, you're putting all three of these tokens on the table. If you're playing this outside of divulge, just as a normal command card, you're putting one of these on the table. And the idea is that this information is, you're like you're setting this up, but this information is supposed to be hidden to your opponent. So it's a pure mind game. Let's talk about what the, uh, what the tokens actually do. All right, here we go for the first one. Smoke and mirrors. The token is removed. Straight up done. <laughs> Straight right? up smoke and mirrors. Great so aim just, for it, by the way. Ju- yeah, just a dud. One of the tokens is just a straight up dud. But again, you could put it in a spot that where your opponent's like, oh no, I don't want to go there because what if that's one of these other two tokens and they don't know that 
and maybe you can divert them out of an area, right? Okay. Yeah, and I think it's, I think it's important too that when they're when they're uh, placing here, um, that they're beyond range one of deployment zones. I don't mm-hmm. see anything here that says that the tokens themselves can't be placed within proximity of each other. I think that's true. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd have to double check, but I think that's true. It doesn't. It doesn't really state. At uh, least in sorry, the card. actually, sorry. It says here or placed at range one of an enemy bane token. If that, no, nope, I don't see anything there. We can verify that, but I'm not seeing that uh, anywhere here, which also makes potentially smoke and mirrors and the other two as we see them um, that much more interesting. So. Yeah, but you gotta love this one. Although this one may seemingly have less of an effect than others, it definitely has the potential to play that mind game as Joe was indicating. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right, let's jump into the next one. Far more card text here. Yeah, do you want me yeah. to? Do you, can you read that, Joe, or do you want me to read yeah, it? Yeah, I, c- I could read that. It's okay, a, go ahead. It's, it's called the Here I Am token. So if Cad Bane is not on the battlefield and is not defeated, his Here I Am token is replaced by his miniature. Then Cad Bane issues himself an order. So if Cad Bane is on the battlefield, his Here I Am token is replaced with his miniature. Any tokens assigned to Cad Bane remain assigned to him. If Cad Bane is defeated, this token is removed. So... I'm, I, I have a ton to say about this. <laughs> I, I almost like don't want to get into it until after the third token is shown. Yeah. But this is a big one. This is a big one because this is essentially a teleport for yeah. campaign. But um, there's and- way more than that i think so for sure for sure i'm just going to uh, just answer a couple chat questions too that um somebody was asking how the tokens are revealed um so again if you move within range one of a token if you deploy within range one of a token um then that will cause the token to flip then you resolve the effect of the token think minefield yeah it's literally the exact same as minefield except instead of rolling to see if it detonates as soon as someone walks into range one of it you flip it um, another question here coming in, uh, can you use any unit to trigger these tokens? Again, just going to the rules, after a mini moves, deploys, or is placed within range one of an enemy Bane token, if that mini has line of sight to the token, that token is revealed. Yep. It actually says, it's it says after a mini moves. It doesn't speci- specifically say after an enemy mini. No, so it I just... Th- it just I says think that, you can technically trigger this with your own units if you want, I it, think. It does say within range one of an enemy Bane token. So if the token is yours and it's friendly, okay. maybe you can't. Uh-huh. Okay, um, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, Ellis is asking, Good. is it's a it's a may or do you have to? Oh, uh, may I teleport or do this? Uh, we'll we'll get we'll revisit that in a in a second. Let's get the third one out, and then we'll come back and start talking about this as well. Else, so we'll get we'll get your question for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, are we are we good to uh, to show the third? Yeah, do it. Okay, fantastic. Hide that, and the third one is Kablamo. Yeah, it just explodes with the <laughs> with the text at the bottom of the card. Exactly. Right. This is basically just a sab mine. So big explosion with two reds, two blacks, blast, impact two, suppressive, and surge to crit. So you've got a dud, you've got an explosion, and then you've got a take this token away and replace this token with the Cad Bane miniature. Those are your three tokens. Can I just back this up, Joe? Because I think you underplayed. You said an explosion. I th- you have a heck of an explosion. Yeah. Double pretty, red, yeah. double black, surge, crit, blast, impact, two suppressive. Yeah, it's like every it's like everyone's <laughs> mind in the game put together. <laughs> exactly. No, it's a nice big explosion, which is so it's cool. So again, if you play this as a normal three pip, you can either put this down. Or you can maybe put the you could put the one that lets him teleport or switch it places with the token. If you put if you play this as a divulge, you put all three tokens down. You you, you know you can say, oh man, we're playing key positions. I'm gonna put the big explosion on the center. 
You know, mm-hmm. I, like any sort of weird way that you want to set this up, play mind games with your opponent and try to scare them because no one's going to want to walk into this explosion. Right. But they don't know if they're walking into a dud or walking into ex- an explosion or walking into Cad Bane with a face up order token. So it's it's interesting. Now, I don't really have much more to add on the actual Kablamo explosion. It's been on the screen the whole time but i do kind of want to talk more about the the previous one that you were just showing sure yeah uh, yep um i just was getting to to chat here um robert uh says that this makes sabines look like amateur like an amateur <laughs> i don't disagree <laughs> i don't disagree at all so um so okay so let me just add one more piece of text that's going to be in the rrg that kind of clarifies something else about these tokens so this is keep this in mind especially with like the divulge or even with the the regular three pip if you don't want to um let it go off right away this this bullet point says at the start of any round starting with the blue player a player may reveal a friendly here I am token and resolve its effects. So you put this here I am token down and maybe, and you're, you don't deploy Cad Bane on turn one or, or at least during the deploy unit step because you're divulging and divulging forces you to put all three tokens out and not put Cad Bane on the table. But it does say that at the start of any round, you can flip over the here I am token and resolve its effects. So even on turn one, if you wanted to like deploy Cad Bane super aggressively or in a very specific spot on the table, almost stronger than like an infiltrate because there's even less range restrictions, you can do so. You can also like play Cad Bane's one pip as a last, you know, going back to... Uh, he can make two attack actions, and you know, let's say um, you play, you didn't divulge, but you instead just played the normal three pip, and you you chose to put the here I am token as your single token out. Maybe you put it in your backfield or something. Then you play his one pip, you dive in, you go for the steady double attack as the last thing you do on the turn or something at, while keeping Cad Bane safe. Go into the next round. And all of a sudden, boom, I'm just going to teleport him to safety. Exactly. This this was, again, I'm just probably restating a lot of what you said there, uh, Joe. But this is what I was talking about, that turn where you can just put Cad in that risky position. It's almost like you're, you're willing to draw maybe three, four units of fire. Maybe your cad gets pretty beat up pretty badly, but it's a lot. It's like that that turn where your opponent's willing to try to to get at your cad and really hurt them to set up for maybe the future turn where they're going to finish them off. Um, you do that. Mm-hmm. You obligingly go with that. Um, you use his defensive capabilities. You get your offense off, and then you just say, "Nope, sorry, my cad's not going to be seen by any of those units at the start of the next turn." Oh it's, yeah, it's like the ultimate. It's like a pre one pip power play, mm-hmm. where and and not even not even Cunning's going to to uh, you know supersede this. Yeah, because it happens essentially right at the start of the round, like before anything else happens. So exactly, a lot of cool stuff. I, I really I feel like this is a really interesting and safe way to secure a bounty and then get the heck out of dodge and be safe for the rest of the game. Here's a question I had, Joe, and I'm I'm not sure if it's covered or um what if what if CAD picks up a box and you just say, I'm out of here? Um that's a good question. I believe <laughs> that there's I, I believe that there's a sentence about that. It says any tokens assigned to CAD Bane remained yeah. assigned to him. Yeah. I don't know. I, I I'm I'd have to clarify, I'd have to double is that check a, whether is that or a not. condition is that a condition token? I guess because it's a condition or it's an objective token. Yeah. My Sorry, guess, an objective token is what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. My my guess is that <laughs> because it's considered a token, you can do like a box grab and Did he just become the out. best box grabber in the game? Maybe. I mean, here's the thing. You could you could put his you could put you could play his three pip on the divulge. 
at the start of turn one, you can literally deploy on the box if you want, or you can, I see, I don't know. That, that's kind of weird because he, there's still ways to like infiltrate on top of the box. There's still ways for like the speed three units to get the box on turn one while you play your three pip and are trying to put that in the, I, I, I'm not saying that he, I'm not saying that he is, let's, let me, let me specify here. Is he the best box extractor in the game? I mean, probably because there's a way that you can grab a box and then literally teleport across the table. And, and just while we're on the topic of CAD doing crazy things, what about just tossing a token in, um, you know, whatever, I think it's outside of enemy deployment zones, but for just a late a late game, let's say, let's say a turn six, it's like, I'm just going to teleport over here and now walk in to your deployment zone for breakthrough. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> just wow. This this guy is just uh, he he's cagey. I mean, isn't that so fitting of CAD though? Is this like yeah. not mo- uh, like a very characterful, um, synergistic, if you will, um, keywords and plays? I, I love it. I love it. Well, he's yeah. I mean, he's constantly playing tricks on people. He's constantly escaping. You know, he's making it look like he's gonna fail and then getting out. A lot of stuff like that, so I think this is really thematic, too. It's like, oh, you thought you had me. Bye. You know, stuff yeah. like that. And I love it. It's like, man, even more of a reason to, to sculpt him, like, talking into his comm gauntlet yeah. or whatever. I mean, <laughs> it's like, I'm, get me out of here. I'm going to bring us back up on stream here, but if uh, Chad has any reason to uh, to come and want to see something else, I can certainly jump back around there. So, um, yeah, man, talk about, I mean... Like I, well, like I was going back, maybe Smoke and Mirrors. I mean, Smoke and Mirrors, if, if we could uh, use it for its true intent, it looks like that is a pretty weak token in comparison. Right. But however, I think Smoke and Mirrors becomes infinitely stronger given the fact that the other two are so strong. Yeah, exactly. And that's one of the th- And your opponent doesn't know which is which, right? So mm-hmm. Smoke and Mirrors is the dud, but it plays a mind game. Yeah, and potentially whole, Smoke and Mirrors yeah. may be the strongest of the tokens because it plays that mind game. Oh yeah, if you can force your opponent to not want to go into a certain spot on the table, you're at an advantage there, whether mm-hmm. it might look like that or not, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff with that 3-pip. I love Cad Bane. Um, overall, I think he's got an amazing kit. Um, I'm already thinking of lists that I could build with him. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really excited about it, man. I love the idea of like immobilizing something and then charging it with Grievous or some commandos. That's going to be cool. Um, and, and and just just one thing, I just, I know we brought this up uh, on the last stream with LJ, but just thinking about having the bounty keyword in this faction and what that adds to the faction, you know, that yep. we finally have an extra victory point mechanic for all four factions. Yes, I agree. That is that is strong. And just just on that point about victory po- uh, vi- victory point token um, or or potential, I was just thinking about again. Um, here I am token. Cad Bane mm-hmm. gets us um, in in bombing run. Mm-hmm. Can you assign him one of the tokens, even though he is not um, placed on the battlefield? And if so. Could he here I am into the end zone or that near I, near I, the end zone? I honestly don't know off the top yeah, of that, my head. That'll, that'll, that'll be interesting. But that, Again, that'll be something. Let's take a look at that, and then we'll bring it back up on Tuesday. Yeah. I'm just thinking of all the ways that um, just being somewhere else on the battlefield instantaneously, all the things that that presents. And man, does it just present a lot of problems for your opponent, and I can see very few downsides. Now, Ellis's point was around, um, and I said we revisit that, he wanted to know, and maybe I'll go back to that um, uh, that card here for a second. He wanted to know around if this was a may or a must basically teleport. So if I'm reading this, if Cad Bane is not on the battlefield and is not defeated, his Here I Am token is replaced by his miniature. To me, that doesn't imply there is any option to yeah, not it, it replace. It literally just says is replaced. Yeah, that's what I'm reading it yeah. as, yes. It doesn't say may be replaced. Right. Yeah. And then if, if yeah. Cad Bane is on the battlefield, his Here I Am token is replaced with his miniature. So again, I don't see any option presented in that Um, I'm not an English major by any means, but I would read that as I don't have a choice. Like if my wife were to say that, uh, like 
<laughs> I am doing something, then that would be I'd have no choice. Uh, if she asks me to do something, feel like I have a choice. But here it doesn't feel like it's an ask of a question. It's is replaced. So I am doing that. Mm -hmm. That's how I that's how I read it anyway. So. Yep. Okay. Let me just add two more points to that. There's also a bullet point that says after a mini moves, deploys, or is placed at range one of the enemy Bane token, if that mini has line of sight to the token, the token is revealed. Right. It doesn't say maybe revealed. So that also has implications with Kablamo. Okay. Because Kablamo says, you know, the, uh, it just it just is right. So. You can't save your Kablamo until two or three units walk into it and do a big explosion. If your opponent wants to trigger it, they can tr just trigger it with one unit. I, so, I yeah, I think there's I, I think it's going to be very interesting to play this for the first few times because I almost feel there's as much enjoyment around revealing these tokens for your opponent as there is for you to reveal them on oh, yeah. your opponent. Like when your opponent when, runs when in, they it's flip like, a smoke, yeah, smoke and mirrors. mirrors. You're like, oh my God, thank Sorry, you. bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Marvin uh, came in and he went and either knew or read a uh, bombing run says that a unit leader has to be in the deployment zone. So that would supersede um, him. Now, uh, doesn't say that, um, I guess that doesn't preclude him from you not divulging CAD's yeah. card, still using the one token yeah, as the no. here I am. I, I think the question more is, can you have something that's set aside off the table and have it be de uh, declared that it's holding the bomb? Right. Right, that's, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you can't just like go into a deployment zone because the token has to be range one outside of the deployment. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. No, but you'd you'd still be able to you still get your actions from there, right? Because if you use yeah, the yeah. mechanic at the start of the round, then you'd yep. still get your actions there. So I I still think there's great potential for him to be a striking unit for bombing run if that if that mechanic works. But definitely for breakthrough for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, a really cool way if you were to kind of. I don't know, I, I guess your opponent can deploy around it for sure. But you know those characters that occasionally will be backfield, it's really tough to get on them because they're a little squishy and soft. There is potential where you just end up bountying one of those soft token, uh, soft units, put your token in a nice advantageous position, either center, back line, or in a really good spot, maybe even on top of a building near your opponent's deployment zone. Here I am, jump off, move into melee or whatever, end up immobilizing that unit so you can get at least a couple rounds of melee off and doing a nice character assassination. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> I mean, hunting snipers in the backfield is going to yep. be a thing. Bountying generic officers or like R2, mm -hmm. that's going to be uh, maybe a little easier to pick up with CAD than some of the other bounty hunters. Um, a lot of a lot of interesting stuff here. A lot a lot of meat to get into to explore with him. Um, I think that there's going to be so many different ways that you can play him that you could build completely different lists around what gimmick you want to explore. Um, he's a very flexible unit. I think he's just an amazing addition to the faction uh and an amazing character in the show so i'm super hyped for it man and i'm just yeah. already just <laughs> racking my wheels are spinning so yeah 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 we'll we'll definitely sure. we'll definitely um because we probably won't have a much much other new information we'll definitely go uh on tuesday and start breaking down some uh some list ideas uh definitely hope people come back on tuesday because i'd love to hear uh, what you guys are starting to think about now that you have this information, you know, take a few days, go off, uh, spin your evil, evil plans, uh, and then come back and definitely share them with us. So, definitely. Uh, <laughs> Daniel's suggesting to build a table where Cad Daddy comes up through the ground on a spring. <laughs> sounds like something Joe can can work on. So, yeah. Uh, Man, well, what is this, an in sync concert or something? We'll, <laughs> exactly. we'll have a, a fog machine yeah. and it'll come up through the floor. Yep, exactly. <laughs> just, just smoke and mirrors. He doesn't actually appear that first time the effect goes <laughs> off. So, yeah. Uh, Paul's it. asking if there's a rule allowing the owner to look at their face down Bane tokens. Um, if not, forgetting will happen. Um, it's not specified. I, that you can the, or the, can't. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's not specified in the like RRG entry that was given to us. So that's actually a great point. Maybe something we can go talk to the developers about, yep. bring to their attention. Because again, you know, you got to remember, this is unreleased content. Yep. There's still the potential that some of these rules may change when the time that the final PDF gets released. Um, we're just going with what we've been given, but that's a great yep. point. No, there, abs- yeah. absolutely. So I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. I think that he has a lot of. Um, I think that when you get a few plays down through with CAD, you're probably going to have a pretty strong understanding yourself. I think there is going to be a slight learning curve. Um, that's going to, uh, you know, probably reoccur every single time you play somebody who hasn't run into CAD. So you're going to have to make sure that the mechanics of that are, are well explained, specifically because it can start right from gate from pre-turn one all the way to 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 turn six, right? Because mm-hmm. he's got start and end mechanics. He has pre-round mechanics. He's got pre-game mechanics. He's got mid-turn mechanics. Yeah. Um, he's a, he's a pretty uh, hefty character on in terms of the logistics in terms of how to play him. So um, just I th- I think when he comes out, I think everyone will be understanding. But bear with the, your opponents, especially if they're new and haven't seen uh, any of the mechanics here. So yeah, I think this is kind of a high skill cap character in general, and I think it's going to take some time for the community to get the hang of all these little shenanigans. You know, there's a lot of stuff that we could, you know, throw into the pot here. So, but uh, I'm excited. I mean, I'm sure, you know, we'll be able to start proxying him right away now that his information's out there and we can, you know, maybe see him on TTS or something soon, I'm sure. And yeah, start start exploring, start building tactics as a community. Yeah. See, see what people come up with. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be pretty awesome. So... All right, well, that brings us just over that uh, hour two mark there, if we don't count the the, uh, timer time. I think we'll just maybe restate here. uh, If you guys haven't, and if you're inclined, slide over to the Legion Academy YouTube uh, page. Uh, Become a Mm -hmm. subscriber. On Tuesday, we'll pick uh, any new or old or existing subscribers. Um, We're going to do uh, just a draw on Tuesday night show. You'll get a set of uh, silhouettes, a set of four coming to you, uh, just for for supporting the channel in, uh, in terms of follow so uh, we do greatly appreciate that so um, had a massive crowd still got 60 people I think we topped 92 at one point so that's uh, absolutely uh, amazing Uh, so we do appreciate that appreciate all you guys hanging out with us uh, as well so I got no more final thoughts uh, Joe other than the fact I'm going to jump off here and uh, start whipping up some Cad Bane lists so just uh, Cad Cad Bane and two tanks seems uh, right up my alley so uh, I like it I like it that's it seems pricey but so Whatever. You got, a command, you got to put a commander in there, but yeah, man. Whatever. We'll get we'll get I Grievous think, in there too. I we'll... think I think Grievous one tank and Cad Bane is going to be nasty though. Core units are overrated in this game, so just I mean, all all the specials. Oh, it's it's fine. I'll just just double suppressive AAT shot into exactly. a Cad Bane. Yeah, yeah, there's two shots from this one, two shots from that one. Here's a little yeah. electro gauntlet. Here's a little bomb over here. Hey, we'll reveal this. Oh, Cad Bane. Now oh, he's over on this side now. So, yeah, I'm just gonna pull out my uh, my range twelve movement stick and move all the way to the other corner. <laughs> so. Yeah, so so stay tuned, guys. We'll get this we'll get this uh, listed as like a podcast audio here shortly. We'll also yeah. put this video on YouTube if you want to go watch it later. Yeah. Um, also, it'll stay on Facebook. It'll go on our website, and then join us this Tuesday on YouTube. And we're going to be doing another stream. We're going to be talking about lists with Cad Main, and yeah. really appreciate guys appreciate you guys hanging out and spending some time with us and engaging with us in the chat. And as always, thank you guys so much for listening and watching. All right, guys. Catch you on Tuesday. Cheers. Have a good weekend.